Hi everyone! In this video of Accelerated Chess Dragon, we're going to be looking at part 2 of the Two Knights Defense. So without further ado, let's look at this opening. White will start the game off by playing e4, and now black will play e5. Knight f3, knight c6, d4, e takes d4, bishop c4, and this is all pretty much standard, and you've known this from the last few opening videos I've made. Knight f6, and now e5, and here, this is where the variation differs. Usually, what black will play is plays knight e4, knight g4, he might even play queen e7, but in this opening part, we're going to be seeing black play a different move, and that is d5. And d5 is actually one of the most common moves you'll see in this two knights variation. Uh, you'll see it more often than knight e4, knight g4, or queen e7 combined. Uh, so, after d5 is played, uh, white will play bishop b5. And black will now play knight e4. If you play the move knight d7, that usually doesn't get you anything, because after knight d7 is played, uh, white will just castle, and he will bring his rook to e1, uh, he will capture on c6, he'll double the pawns, and then eventually he'll capture the pawn on d4 back, and he will have a way better position. Uh, so usually knight d7 isn't the move played, it's usually knight e4. So after knight e4 is played, white will recapture the pawn with his knight, and here black will play one of two moves. The first move that he can play is bishop d7, which just develops his bishop, and obviously um, it's trying to break the pin on the c6 knight. And the other move, which we're going to be looking at in the next part, is the more aggressive bishop c5, which is willing to give up the knight for an equal position, weirdly enough. So, let's first look at bishop d7. If bishop d7 is played, then this is the sequence that white will execute. Bishop takes c6, b takes c6, and now white will just castle. And he has given black some doubled c pawns, and he's basically going to use that as his strength, and he's also going to somehow find a way to maneuver his pieces into the very, very weak c5 square. So, usually play will continue in one of three ways. Black can either play the move bishop c5, he could play the move c5, or he could just play the move bishop e7. We're first going to be looking at the move c5, since it's the most basic of all of them. If c5 is played by black, then white will just play knight b3, and here black has one of two moves he can choose from, bishop b5, or just simply playing c6. We're first going to be looking at c6. If c6 is played, then white will play f3, attacking the knight, forcing the knight to go back to g5, and now f4, attacking the knight once again. And this is mainly done to get a few tempo on the knight on g5, and usually the knight will hop back into e4. So it's basically as if you played f4 first. So now white will play knight c3, challenging the knight on e4. Uh, there will be a trade on c3, bishop e7 just developing, and here white will play f5. And the idea is, of course, to try getting an attack against the black king. Black will castle, bishop e3, and now after c4, white will usually put his knight into the c5 square. And if you've noticed, white has managed to utilize the very weak c5 square for his most strongest piece. And instead of playing the move c6, you can always play bishop b5. And bishop b5 will result to this. Rook e1 bishop e7, f3, the knight will come back to g5, and here white will actually give up his bishop just to get an extra pawn. And this is good, I mean he's won a pawn, but the line isn't over yet. So black will play d4, um, threatening to bring his bishop into e3, which is very good for black. Uh, white will play c3, trying to of course get rid of the d4 pawn, and now black will play bishop e3 check. And what he's trying to do is basically infiltrate with his bishop and somehow manage to either suffocate the rook and win it somehow, or he will uh, just get a very active position for his bishops. And this is all supposed to compensate for the pawn that black lost. White will play king h1, and black will play bishop f2. And of course, the rook can only go to one square, which is e4, 
But if you do that, then you do allow moves like queen d5, and that gives black a lot of activity. So instead, white is actually going to use an exchange sacrifice. And it's a very neat one, I must say. So white will play queen b3, uh, moving his queen so that you can move your rook over to d1 or c1 if you need to a bit later. But mainly, it's targeting the b5 bishop. So black will usually capture the rook on e1, white will play queen takes b5 with check, and here both moves for the king do not really favor black at all. You could play c6, but that just gives an extra pawn up, so there's no point in really doing that. So black will play either king e7 or king f8. If king f8 is played, then white will just normally develop with knight a3, and after bishop f2, uh, white will just play rook d1. And this position is just uh, way better for white, mainly because he wins the d4 pawn. And if you think about it, white gave up an exchange, but he's winning two pawns for that exchange. So, theoretically, white would be equal in material, and the pawns that he has on e5, d4, and maybe even b2 and a2 can somehow create counterplay against the black king, and they can start advancing and try queening themselves. Uh, another variation is instead of playing king f8, black could just play king e7. And if he does this, then white will just play knight d3, uh, rewriting his knight, attacking the bishop on e1. And the bishop, of course, only has one square to go to, and that is h4. And now, white will play queen c5 check, and after king e8, white will just play c takes d4. And the point of this is that he's gotten two pawns for the exchange yet again. And... After the simple development with knight c3, d5, advancing the pawn, and just centralizing this rook somewhere like d1 or after g3 is played e1, white should have a very good position in general. And you don't exactly have to play the move c5, but c5 is an interesting line to look at. The next variation we're going to look at is bishop e7. And bishop e7 is just normal development, just bringing the bishop out to e7, uh, getting ready to castle. And now white will just play f3, so just attack the knight on e4. The knight will go to c5, and white will play f4. And here, there are a variety of moves that black can play. Firstly, black can try castles, he could try knight e6, he could try knight e4, and he could also try f5. We're first going to be looking at the move f5. If f5 is played, then white will just play bishop e3, and after castles, he will just play knight c3, and after queen b8, white should be a bit better, uh, mainly because of the doubled pawns on the c file, but also because um, he has a lot more initiative, he has a pawn that's basically restricting this bishop on e7, uh, this bishop on d7 is a bad bishop, and in general, white should be way better. So, f5 isn't very much of a complicated line. Uh, you could also play the move knight e4. If this is played, then after knight c3, challenging the knight, knight takes c3, b takes c3, uh, a very common pattern that you'll see in this variation of the two knights' defense. c5, knight goes back to b3, c4, knight goes back to d4, and now c5. And now white will finally bring his knight back to e2, where it cannot be attacked by any of black's doubled pawns. And usually white should be better here, I mean, he's getting ready to play f5, he's getting an attack ready, he's going to maybe sooner or later play this knight to g3, and even a rook lift can be employed here, and overall white should be better. Uh, there is another move that black can play instead of going for knight e4, and that is to play the move knight e6. If knight e6 is played, then white will just play f5, and now knight takes d4 can be played, queen takes d4, and now queen to b8. Just bringing the queen to the open b file, and also getting an idea of perhaps playing queen b7, and then c5. e6, and this has already gone too far if you allow this to happen. And the main reason why this isn't a very good position is because, well, you're allowing yourself to be attacked as black. And it just, it's too much for black to handle, uh, I mean, after something like f takes e6, queen takes g7, and then rook f8, followed by bishop h6, white is a very much better position. And 
his attack is definitely going to prevail uh, among other things. So there is one more move that you could play, and that is just to castle. And after castles is played, white will just play f5, continue his attack. And here, black has one of two moves he can play. One is bishop g5, and another is knight e4. Uh, we're going to be looking at knight e4 first. If knight e4 is played, then white will play knight c3, uh, black will trade the knights, and then c5, and this common pattern that you've seen. And the knight will go back to e2. And black will play bishop c6, and the idea is, of course, defending the d5 pawn. And white is now going to play f6. And it's a very nice idea trying to bust the position open. And in this very line, you're going to see a lot of very interesting things that you can try employing in your own games. Black will play g takes f6, and here, white will not capture the pawn on f6. If you do that, then you're basically allowing the bishop to come and try to defend the position. You're still going to be better, but it's just allowing some chance of counterplay. So what white is going to do is he's going to play bishop h6. And this is a very nice move. Uh, of course, you're not really threatening to capture the rook on f8 after f takes e5. Because if you think about it, black would be down in exchange, but he would be up two pawns. Not only two pawns, but he would have two connected pawns, and that would mainly be giving black too much if you play bishop takes f8. So instead of doing that, white has a better idea. And I encourage you to find it. So white will play the move knight d4. And the very idea of playing knight d4 is so creative, and it's just so cool in general. Uh, of course, if you play e takes d4 or c takes d4, then white will just play queen g4 check, and of course he is going to threaten checkmates, and it's all over for black. So black must play the move bishop d7, guarding the g4 square. And white's still not going to capture the rook on f8, because he knows it's of course not going to do anything for him. Instead, he's going to play knight c6. And this is a very nice move, because you still cannot capture the knight. Because if you do that, then queen g4 check, and you're lost. So, white will uh, force black to play queen e8, and now knight takes e5, uh, threatening d5 as well. And after bishop e6, queen f3, king h8, uh, getting rid of any ideas like queen g3 check. Queen g3 will still be played, and after rook g8, I encourage you to once again pause the video and find a very brilliant move that white can play to just crush black here. Okay, so white can just play the move knight takes f7 check. And the idea is very simple, uh, it's clearing the e5 square for white's queen, and it doesn't matter whether you play queen takes f7 or bishop takes f7, you are lost. If queen takes f7, then after queen e5 check, queen g7 will be played, and after, say, bishop takes g7 check, rook takes g7, queen takes e6, uh, white has a queen against a bishop, and this is obviously winning for white. So, after knight takes f7 check, it's already very much lost for black, so it's better not to go into the knight e4 variation. Instead, you could play bishop g5, but this would allow knight c3, just normal development, rook e8, and now bishop takes g5. Queen takes g5, and now queen to e2, defending the e5 pawn, and also getting ready to develop the rook on a1 to e1. Rook a b8 queen f2, and now queen e7. So, uh, trying to mainly guard against all the threats that are coming on the king side. If you try playing the move rook takes b2, then this wouldn't necessarily be the best idea, mainly because after e6, white is getting so much initiative, uh, and after, say, e6, you play uh, bishop back to c8 uh, to try avoiding uh, the opening up of a another line. White will just play e takes f7 check, and after king takes f7, he has this very nice move, and I encourage you to find it. White can play knight e6, and the idea of it is so brilliant, and it's so genius. Uh, the idea is that if you play the move knight takes e6, then obviously you're going to be uh, allowing so many lines to be opened up, and, of course, you cannot retreat with the king because the queen will infiltrate. 
So you must try something like king e7, but then there's queen to c5 check, there's rook a e1. There are too many things for white to do, and black is just completely helpless against all of this. Uh, so that's why it's not a really good idea to play rook takes b2, and why it's better to just defend a bit more. So queen e7 will be played, and now rook a e1. And white is still trying to bring all of his forces into the attack. Rook takes b2 will be played, but now white is just going to crush black. f6, trying to open the position up. And after queen f8, f takes g7. And obviously, if you capture the pawn, whether it's with the king or the queen, uh, you're just giving a completely open g-file for white. So instead, black is going to be playing the move queen e7. The, denying the pawn, but obviously for good reasons. However, after the move e6, white is completely winning. Uh, there are a lot of tactics present in the position. For instance, uh, if white wanted to, he can try knight f5 later on. It doesn't matter which piece recaptures, knight f5 is crushing. And this is just too much for white already. Uh, black might as well resign here. So that is what will happen if you play the move bishop e7. Now there's one more move, and that is after castles play bishop to c5. And this is the main move, and it's played more often than not. So now white is going to be playing the move f3, attacking the knight on e4. The knight will go to g5, and now white will play f4. Now, obviously, the knight has to move yet again, so you can move to two places, e4 or e6. So, if black tries the move knight e6, then white will just play c3, and here you have two moves as black, bishop d4 or f5. If f5 is played, then after bishop e3, uh, black castles, knight to d2, bishop takes d4, c takes d4, black can try c5, knight f3, and he should be better because he is going to recapture the pawn on d4 if it is captured with his knight, and also because he's just brought his knight into the game, and this is going to be very good for white. Another move you could consider instead of f5 is bishop takes d4 check, but that would lead to c takes d4, c5, and now d takes c5, and here black is going to be playing the move bishop b5, and now rook f2, knight takes c5, and white will play knight c3. And this is to get an attack on d5 and the b5 bishop, so the bishop will retreat to c6. Bishop e3, and after knight e4, uh, this position is already way too much won for white. Knight takes e4, d takes e4, and now rook d2. And after queen e7 is played, white will just play rook c1, and he is completely winning. White has the open c file for himself, uh, he has a lot of control over the c5 square. Uh, this bishop can just hop into c5, prevent black from castling. And white is in general just completely winning. There's nothing that black can really do to change that. So that is knight e6, but you could also play the move knight e4. And after knight e4 is played, white will just develop his bishop. Black will castle. Another move that black could try is bishop b6. But after knight c3 offering a trade of knights, knight takes c3, b takes c3, queen e7 is one move that black can play. Another move is castles, and another move is c5. Uh, if you castle as black, then queen f3 is just very good for white, you're starting an attack. And if instead of that, c5 is played, then there's knight b3, c4, knight d4, and this maneuver that we all know by now. And finally, uh, there is the option of playing queen e7. But that allows queen d2, and after castles, rook a e1, rook a e8, knight b3, bishop f5, a4, and after a5, queen f2. And white is generally better. He has secured an outpost on the c5 square. Uh, he has Lots of uh, possibilities for attacking, like h3 and g4, and then follow it up with f5. And white is just a very good advantage that black cannot really easily catch up with white. So, that is bishop to b6. Now, you could also castle as black, but after knight d2, uh, black has yet again a lot of moves. Uh, so just bear with me here. 
Black and Blade, Knight takes D2. Uh, F5. F6. Or Bishop D4. We're going to be looking at all of them. Uh, if Bishop takes D4 is played, that can immediately be discarded. Uh, the idea is that after Bishop takes D4, you can play C5, but this already loses a pawn, or it just secures a very nice outpost for this knight on E4. If C takes D4 is played, then just knight C5, and you're going to recapture the D4 pawn a bit later, but your knight has a very good outpost on the C5 square, and if you just play D takes E4, then white just plays bishop c5 and he's up a pawn. Now instead of playing bishop takes d4, you could go for f6 as black, but then white plays knight e4, d e4, and now queen e2. So white is threatening this very nice queen c4 check move, which would win the bishop on c5. So black now tries to complicate the position as much as he can. Bishop g4. And the idea is that now you've unleashed an attack towards the d4 knight, so if white takes on g4, black will take on d4. But white doesn't do that. Instead, white will play queen f2, and here black has a few moves. You can play queen to e8, or queen to d5. If queen e8 is played, then after knight b3, uh, there's an exchange of bishops, f takes e5, queen takes e4, and after e f4, rook f4, uh, a trade of queens. White should be better because of the doubled c pawns that black has. And in general, uh, the activity that white's rooks can have, along with this knight with this very strong c5 square, white is just obviously way better. Now, instead of playing queen e8, you could also go queen d5, but this allows a lot of tactics to occur. White will play knight takes c6, and here, of course, if you play queen takes c6, then you lose the bishop on c5. And if you play the move bishop e3, then after knight e7 check, the queen is won. And after bishop f2 check, rook f2, white is up a pawn. And in all of the variations we see after knight takes c6, white is going to be up a pawn. So bishop a3 is going to be played, uh, trying to at least double white's pawns and isolate them uh, before you can capture the knight on c6. But e takes f6 instead. And of course, now if you play uh, bishop takes b2, then you lose your queen with knight e7 check. And if you capture the knight on c6, then there is just too many complications after f takes g7 and also b takes a3. In general, white would be up two pawns and black would have a very much worse position. So rook f6 would be played. And here, now, the move that finishes everything, knight e5. And the point of this is that if bishop takes b2 is played, then you just play knight takes g4. And you're giving up a rook for two minor pieces, and white will be better after this. Uh, for instance, he can reroute his knight to e5, uh, he can put his rook on the b file, which is a very useful file in this example, and white is just going to be better in general. So instead of playing bishop takes b2, you could play the move queen takes e5, which is the only other move that really saves some material. Um, of course now white is threatening to play knight takes g4, and also the bishop on a3 is attacked, so that's why queen takes e5 is forced. f takes e5, and now, and now you capture the queen on f2, bishop takes f2, and after bishop takes b2 and rook a e1, white is winning, um, he's attacking the e4 pawn, and of course you cannot play bishop takes e5 here, because that would lose the e4 pawn, and that's a fork on both bishops. So, after all of that, it just proves that f6 is not a very good idea. But there's also f5, and if f5 is played, then after knight takes e4, f takes e4, queen d2, uh, white should be better after bishop b6 and now b4. Uh, b4 is trying to yet again secure an outpost on the c5 square, so c5 will be played, b takes c5, bishop takes c5, and now knight b3. And this unfortunately forces a trade of bishops, because if you move this bishop back, then you lose the d5 pawn with check, and then this e4 pawn is going to fall next. So you must take on e3, queen will capture, and white has gotten an outpost on c5, uh, d5 is extremely weak, and white has also gotten a passed pawn on the e5 square. So white is better. 
Uh, but after all of that, the move that we're all wondering of what happens after is knight d2. And after knight takes d2 is played, white will play queen takes d2. And here there are two moves, bishop to b6 or f6. If f6 is played, then white will play knight b3, bishop b6, queen c3, and now after a trade of pawns on the e5 square, queen e7, white has finally gotten the knight on c5. Rook takes f1 check, rook takes f1, rook e8, and now after b4, uh, white is very much better. Uh, you have secured a very nice high post on c5. Now, if bishop b6 is played, then white will play knight b3. And here, uh, there are two moves, queen e7 or bishop f5. And if queen e7 is played, then after rook a e1, white is just better. And if bishop f5 is played, then after a4, bishop takes c2 can be tried. But after bishop takes b6, bishop takes b3, bishop c5 will be played. The bishop gets onto the c5 square. After rook e8, f5 will be played, and white is just way better. He is starting an attack, and there is no way that black can really stop it. Rook takes e5 can be tried, but after queen c3, forking both the rook and the bishop, you must give the pawn back up. And now bishop takes d4, rook e2, and after rook f3, uh, white has gotten an attack started, and he's going to play the move rook g3, uh, attack the g7 pawn. There are so many weaknesses in black's position, and with this f pawn, along with these rooks coming to the f file, white is definitely going to stand better. So after rook f3, the variation ends, and white is, in all cases, better. So, I hope you all enjoyed the video, and if you have any suggestions or feedback for me, please let me know in the comment section, and stay tuned for more chess, and the third and final part of this opening.